Thank you for the opportunity to share the results of our surveys. I first of all want to recognize Peter Smith, who did a lot of the statistical analysis, and he works for the Institute of Work and Health. Also, I want to recognize the people who helped out, various health and safety staff reps from healthcare unions and from other unions, both uh, within Ontario and across Canada, and interested academics from both Canada, the US and Europe. The purpose of the survey was to try to capture the experiences of workers, both healthcare and non-healthcare, during the pandemic in real time. We had a lot of different questions in the survey, but the ones I want to focus on today are the measures of anxiety and depression symptoms and the adequacy and availability of personal protective equipment and infection control procedures. Here's a graph of the response rates. Uh, you can see that the healthcare in blue uh, responses came in beginning of April till the uh, first week of May, and the non healthcare workers' responses came in at the end of April till the middle of May. The anxiety symptoms were from the generalized anxiety disorder screen, which is two questions about nervousness and worry, and it's rated according to this scale from zero to th three for each question. And since there's two questions, the total score is from zero to six. The cutoff for clinical follow-up is a score of three or more. Here you see the results, 54.8% uh, of the healthcare sample uh, screened positive for anxiety and 42% of the non-healthcare sample screened positive for anxiety. Depressive symptoms were similarly structured, two questions about interest and feeling down, depressed and hopeless the same scale from 0 to 3 for two questions for a total score of 0 to 6 and the cutoff is identical to the anxiety of three or more. 42.3 percent of the healthcare sample screened positive for depressive symptoms whereas in the non-health care sample it was 34.7 percent. We asked questions about the adequacy and appropriateness of personal protective equipment. If the personal protective equipment was appropriate and adequately supplied, we define that as have respondents having their needs met. If it was appropriate but inadequate or inappropriate or not there at all, they were different shades of needs not being met. The list of personal protective equipment for the healthcare workers is listed below and also for the non-healthcare workers. Here you can see that for healthcare workers, 18% had all of their PPE needs met and for non-healthcare workers, it was 37%. For infection control procedures for healthcare workers, uh, we had a similar scale, appropriate and adequately implemented, meant that their needs were met, and that was the green category. Appropriate or problems with adequacy and uh, implementation had various shades from yellow to brown. The list for the healthcare infection control procedures is given below. And for the non-healthcare workers, it was a different list of um, infection control procedures or measures. The perceived adequacy of infection control procedures is provided in this graph and 16.9% of healthcare worker respondents uh, had 100% of their needs met, whereas in the non-healthcare it was almost 23%. Then we compared the 
proportion of respondents who screen positive for anxiety by their category of PPE needs met or infection control procedures met. You can see for those who had all their PPE needs met, 43% screen positive for anxiety, whereas for those who had none of their needs met, 61%. And a similar pattern for infection control procedures for the healthcare workers. Uh, for depressive symptoms, there was a similar pattern, but not as stark. These were adjusted for various variables so that we could see just the relationship between the infection control procedures, PPE, and the outcome, whether it be depression or anxiety, and the list of items that were controlled for in the analysis is given at the bottom of the slide. For the non-healthcare workers, uh, here you have a breakdown of the responses for both the anxiety and depressive symptoms by where they are working. The blue is working at home remotely. Um, the yellow is working at a workplace, site-based workers. And the black is workers who are unemployed. And you can see that working remotely had a lower rate of people screening positive for anxiety or depression compared to the other two categories. When you broke this down according to their needs being met, uh, we see a bit of a different pattern. Uh, working remotely or working at work with all your needs being met was roughly about the same, 34 or 35 percent people of the respondents screening positive for anxiety, whereas having none of your needs being met uh, at work was associated with 52% uh, of respondents screening positive for anxiety, which was even higher than being unemployed, which was 44%. Similar for infection control procedures, it's interesting to note that if you are at work with 100% of your needs being met, only 30% of the respondents screen positive for anxiety, whereas working at home was 35%. Again, you can see the same pattern for not having any needs met and not working at all. So the key messages here are that PPE and infection control uh, procedures and measures are not just about infection control, they are also associated with mental health symptoms. And strengthening and monitoring these programs is important both in healthcare and non-healthcare. Working at a workplace with all your needs being met for infection control is associated with less anxiety than working at home. All this suggests that the ongoing monitoring of mental health of workers is also warranted in this pandemic, not just the infection rates. If you're interested in um, knowing more about this study, it's been published uh, for the healthcare workers and is available at this link. The non-healthcare worker uh, study is a set to be published, I believe, next week or the week after. Thanks for allowing us to share our findings with you. And if you want to get a hold of us, uh, you can contact me at this email address or Peter Smith at his email address. Thank you again.